All right, everybody. The Colorado Avalanche win streak ends. The Nathan McKinnon streaks continue. Let's talk about all of that and then some. New episode of Locked on Avalanche coming at you. Your Locked on Avalanche, your daily podcast on the Colorado Avalanche. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody, welcome to the Lockdown Avalanche Podcast. We're part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host, Chris Maselli. With me, as always, is Mr. Shaggy Von Doom coming in bright and clear on today's episode. Uh, yeah, thank you for tuning in, making this your first listen of the day. Always appreciated. Make sure you're following us on our social media outlets, LLP and underscore Avalanche on Twitter, X, Lockdown Avalanche, Instagram, and threads, questions, comments, concerns, and opinions, Lockdown Avalanche at gmail.com. And follow us over on our YouTube channel. Hit subscribe. Get notified when a new show goes live. And subscribe to our subtext as well. Link to that is in the show notes below. And when you do, you chat with Kyle and I one-on-one. We get your opinions and everything Avalanche-related, which we share on this very podcast. Let's dive into things, sir. <clears throat> if you're uh, watching over on YouTube, we will get to that uh, Eustace Ananen contract extension. I think it's, I mean, I think it's a, it's good. You know, it, it, it's short, but I think it's a little bit meaningful. So we'll discuss that a little bit later. We'll start with uh, the the recent game that was now two days ago, um, the Avalanche and the Canadians. <clears throat> I think it was one of those games where how the Avalanche have been playing, the expectation was this win streak would just go to 10. You'd reach double digits and, and have a 10-game 10, 10 winning streak because of how the Avalanche are playing because of how Montreal is a team kind of in transition right now, but has good players. Um, and the Avalanche did not play a poor game. You play this game again, and everything else remains the same. They probably get a few more in net and and win this thing. But uh, you run into games like this every once in a while, Kyle. And and there's, I, I it, you know, I, I know there's some people that want to pull more out of this loss than other ones, but it's a loss. You might have a few more before the season comes to an end. Um, I'm not, you know, you know, throwing my head in the sand because of this loss. I thought they played a good game. They just ran like like how many times do you say this, Kyle? They ran into a, a hot goalie, at least for that game. And you know, when it comes to this game against Montreal, this is that's it. We're done with Montreal for the season. Congratulations. By the way. Yeah, you're 0 and 2. <laughs> yeah. You're 0 and yeah. 2 versus Montreal, losing by one in both games. Is Montreal the new Arizona? It's is, I, is are they the Arizona of the East right now? Yeah. I'll give you one more to make it sting just a little bit more. This is the mm-hmm. first time Montreal has won in Denver in a decade. Wow. So I didn't see that. Wow. Yeah. So it's it's not great, but also I'm not I'm I'm not going to start lamenting. This is a terrible. I can't believe the Avs this, that, the other, they just won nine in a row. And we were talking about that Pittsburgh comeback going down four, nothing. And then coming all the way back, they had no reason to do that. And they did it. They had every reason to win this game in Mon- versus Montreal. And they didn't, mm-hmm. that's just, that's just how it goes. And <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it's not a great loss. It's not what you want, but the Avs played decent. I don't, they're, if they played good, they would have won the game. It was a decent. I mean, you got well. You had you had the lead forty seconds in, and exactly. you get the, you get the McKinnon uh, streaks out of the way, um, so they continue. And you, again, it goes back to yeah. You you walked into this game feeling like yeah, th- everything is in line to continue this streak, um, and within forty seconds, you 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 take the lead. Ten seconds later, uh, it's tied. Yeah, Alan Roach is still announcing the McKinnon goal while Montreal scores, and and I didn't like that goal against Annan. Like that that one, he just he was very slow to react to it. Um, Nick Suzuki is a good scorer. Like he's he's a he's a he's a good hockey player. He's a captain for a reason, right? Yeah. But I just didn't like. I would say like Annan had like there was nobody in front of him. Not, nothing was blocking him, and I, he just he just let it go by him. Um, the second one, he thought he had it underneath his pass. Yeah. And it was one of those ones there where it just was a little bit too far away from him by his skates when he's, you know, he's, he's got the legs closed 
and he didn't have it. And guy in Montreal picks it, goes around the other side of the net, and, and there's your second goal. And that's it. <laughs> no more goals for this game. The the, the Avs hit how many? Po- I think uh, two or three. I think Miko hit two himself, and I think McKinnon hit another one. So they hit three posts. They had really good looks. It again. Um, it, it's just uh, you play this game again, and and you you feel pretty good about how this game would would end up because. Yeah, still played well. They still played a good game. I can't fault him for this game. Yeah, I think Eustis was a little slow because I think he had the contract check still in his pocket that he hasn't went to go cash yet, and he was being very ginger not to rip that thing, still sitting in his game pants. But you 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 do want a little bit of a better effort because I know we talk about Yorgiev, and I got to be even here, but that's one Mm -hmm. shot, one goal. Like, yeah, it's it is. it's not what you want. It's this. So now you have that problem with both goalies. Great, wonderful, everybody. This is this is your goalie situation, in Colorado. Yeah. But it, it and again, you just need a little bit more effort. Like you talked about it. Like the Avalanche went up one nothing early, and you got the streak out of the way. You you did what you needed to, and it felt like everybody took a sigh of relief. Like the point streak's still there good everybody's on the bench and then it was like okay who's taking this next step and you keep looking on who's who's doing the next push and you look and it's the third period because after the first nothing happened uh the goalies Mm. tightened up but that's about it play didn't really skew one way or another but the damage was done early and nobody made that extra push um i'll fight back against that because i thought the avalanche had some incredible offensive uh possessions incredible where they they, and they were more often than not the top line which you know what surprise is that but they had uh i think it was in the second maybe i'm trying to remember which one it was it was either second or third obviously but they they were pushing and montreal had nothing and it was one of those where you're just like wow like they're gonna get a goal just based on montreal being gassed and they got some good shots, and they were saved. And so I, 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 I feel like the Avalanche, you know, re- possession wise, were in control of this. It doesn't show up in in like shots on goal because shots on goal are actually pretty even. Um, I don't know what the blocks were. I probably look those up, but um, no, I, I think the Avs had really good offensive possessions. That is, uh, you know, you, you run those back. That's the difference in the game. And let me let me push back on the pushback. I, I I do remember like the good chances being set up, but I feel like all that was negated by some of the worst power play um, attempts that the Avalanche have put on the ice all year. There was three inept power plays that just it, it felt like it was a detriment mm-hmm. to the team. So once you go up on the main advantage and you're n- not only do you not convert, but you look that bad trying. It just takes all the momentum away and you're having to build back up and you're having those mini battles of trying to come back and get that momentum going again. I feel like that's kind of what led it to that average feeling like, yes, there were good five on five opportunities. There was some good net crashing, good passing. But when it came to the power play where you thought, okay, here we go. They're finally going to turn it on and make that push. Everything just crumbled and it just Mm. it derailed everything the Avalanche were trying to do. And it's not like Montreal has, you know, they're they're a bad team that just happens to have a, a, <clears throat> a good penalty kill. Like their penalty kill is bad too. So with the way that the Avs have been rolling with with everything, yeah, whenever you had a, a penalty, you, you kind of felt like, oh, yeah, this is this is where they'll, they'll get something. I and mean, they they had a, a couple good looks on a couple power plays, but I think on one power play they had one or zero shots on goal on on one of their power plays. Um, I I think you know. St. Louis, I think he, I think he's a really good coach. I thought the yeah. jury was out on him, but he, I think he had a pretty good game plan. And they, they, they were uh, collapsing defensively. Um, they were making it a little bit difficult. The Avalanche, you know, like I said, that top line is they're going to get their chances. And the Avs once again rolled out all four lines, and I thought for the most part they all looked good. <clears throat> but you saw defensively what Montreal was doing. They weren't allowing the Avalanche to get that, like Valachuskin was a ghost in this game yeah and and he and we all know what his his presence is is right in the net front they allowed him to do nothing in that net front they had multiple guys on him all game long and they were saying take your chances from from the point 
from the blue line. And uh, we all love Kale McCarr. All of them. All world. Best defenseman in the league. I'll say that until he retires. Is he not struggling to get those pucks through traffic lately? That that used to be his just like his chef's kiss was finding a way to get that puck through traffic. Easier said than done. I know. But it just seems like that lately he's been missing everything from the outside and from from the perimeter, from the point wherever he is. I don't know. Again, it's tough. I don't think it's because it's not for lack of trying. It's just he seems to – I can't remember the last one he's actually nailed through that's gone through traffic and gone into the net. Yeah, this has definitely been a weird, rough year for Kale McCarr. Um, well, it's not rough. No, I – Don't say well, rough. No, it, it, no, no, no. I'm not – not not so much yeah. overall, but there have been more we, – we're talking negative about Kale McCarr and his play. When was the last time no. that's happened? I'm not, it, but I don't want to. I don't want to make it seem like it's a negative thing. Like it's tough. It's tough to navigate it, it, it's, through traffic. It, he was it, just so good at it. It's odd to me that it's. It seems to be like just he, he's hitting a rough patch of getting that puck through traffic lately. It's it's a negative when you are in a losing effort, and it's a negative when you're usually a lightning rod of the momentum and the highlight plays. And honestly, I'll I'll be. Re- I, we haven't had that from Kale McCarr in a while. It's been just a he's he's been there. It's been nice to see him, but you haven't had that breakout, just incredible Kale McCarr play in quite some time. And it's the magnifying glass is out when this is the highlight that you get to see of him. Yeah, I mean, I'm not down on him. I, he, he's he, he's playing fine, but um, it's just uh, I, I, when 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 the 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 time is winding down. And, you know, you're getting those opportunities out there. You're just waiting for that puck to just, like, pop the net. <clears throat> and it didn't happen. So, and it hasn't happened for, for a little while now. But I, he's still going to shoot. He's like, it's like, you know, uh, John Stark's taking three-point shots. He keeps shooting them. Even though it's the finals and, and he's missing, he's still shooting them. Because that's what he does. That's what he's good at. He'll break through. It'll it'll get corrected. But it just seems like lately they haven't been finding their way they just get blocked, and it's – I don't know if guys are onto him or it's just a little rough patch he's going through with that play specifically. And, we'll and that's something I want to – that coupled with what you said about Marty St. Louis, that's something mm-hmm. I want to talk about on the other side of this break with Nathan McKinnon. All right. Let's do that. We got uh, – yeah, we will discuss Nathan McKinnon. How long can these streaks go for? We'll talk about that and uh, the Usus Anunin contract extension as well. We'll do that next. First, let's hear from FanDuel. Say goodbye to busted brackets because mine is, and I know Kyle's is, because (laughs) FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney, whether you are betting on a big upset or a number one seed. It's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. If you listen to us, you know what our picks were. I actually did two brackets this year, Uh, and I went with my boy here who's an Auburn fan which I thought was a good pick. I didn't, you know, is is half, hey, it's my man here. I'm going to support him if my team's not in it. Half, it's a pretty good pick. Apparently it wasn't because they lost in the first round. And my other pick was Baylor. Mm. Took Baylor and they they folded in the second round. So I once my team loses, I delete the app. There's yep. no point in, in keeping it around. Uh, so, but you can keep betting on the individual games if you want to. And right now, <clears throat> new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks in bonus bets to use on point spread, money lines. You can even pick who is going to win it all. Just visit fanduel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. All right, let's uh, continue this talk about the Avs and the Canadiens, and we were discussing uh, Martin St. Louis, and I think he's turned into a he's turned into a good coach. No surprise, he's a great player. Well, I shouldn't say no surprise because sometimes it doesn't translate into a good head coach, mm-hmm. especially one that just gets thrown into this level right off the bat. But I think he's been good. Like he, you know that they have to they're, they're in a rebuild and they're not really going for it. But when you hey you beat the Avalanche twice. That's something. 
And see, and this is this is leading into the conversation we're going to be having around Nathan McKinnon. And it's something like we talked about Kale McCarr and like the little bit of a hiccup becoming a noticeable thing. This is something else I was walking away from the game with. This is Marty St. Louis figuring out what to do with the Avalanche and beating the Avalanche with a Montreal Canadian team that he shouldn't. Mm. This is the same conversation that we had around the Devils game. This was a Lindy Ruff head coach Devils team that had the perfect plan for how to slow down the avalanche Mm -hmm. how do bad teams know how to slow down the colorado avalanche this is new usually the avalanche have that upper hand they can just speed 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 and win the game you're finding more and more teams have that perfect game plan to make things muddy for the avalanche and it's it's interesting to watch especially and this is one of those things that kind of make you think about it with mckinnon trying to finish out the rest of the home games and mm. going into the playoffs. If you watch the end of that game, um, <clears throat> how the the ben- the coaches on the bench were celebrating, you, you would think they like they clinched a playoff spot. Yeah. Like I, it, it meant something to them that they won this game. So uh, you know, I think guys like St. Louis, like former players going up against good teams, that is we've said it before on the show, guy. Like that that's kind of like the litmus test going into the offseason. Yeah. They can look back and be like, this is the improvements that we need to make. These are the adjustments we need to make. These are the guys we need to bring in. And looking back last year, what were our good wins? Well, you played the Avalanche twice and beat them. They did. Like they, they I mean, I don't want I don't want to overreact to it. Like they, they weren't like popping champagne on the on this on the on the bench. But they they were they were excited that they won that game. Yeah. It wasn't just eh, let's just walk off and uh, head into the locker room. They they were celebrating the head coaches and assistant coaches on that bench. Was kind of it was kind of a big deal for them, and I understand why because that's the point of the season that you're at. Um, is is you know anyone you can get, you're at the point where you bring that into next year, and the guys that are still with you say like, hey, look how we ended the year. That's where you want to do if you're a team like the Canadians is end the year solid, and hopefully that continues. No guarantee because look at what the Buffalo Sabers have been doing year after year, but. You know. Yeah, it, I completely agree because like coaches like Marty, Marty St. Louis, you don't have a lot of coaching resume. Right. So if you could go into that exit interview at the end of the year saying, hey, I know the year wasn't what we wanted, but we beat the Avalanche twice. That's one mm-hmm. of those check marks on your resume. See you again next year. Enjoy the summer. And, the you know, they won the game. Yep. Congratulations. They won the game. Um, and they I thought they had a good game plan. But you know the Avs had they still had chances, yeah. They still had chances. Like I said, they hit posts. Um, they 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 had odd man rushes. They just you know I, I think they're getting they're going back to getting a little bit too cute with these you know two on ones and three on ones. Um, shoot the puck, really. Like I'm not that guy that yells it from the stands, but I I was for a, a couple times in that game. They, um, they shot yeah. it one more time than Montreal in that game. So yeah. that crowd, you're satiated. <laughs> um, say for the, the first 40 seconds of the game, Nathan McKinnon does extend his streaks of uh, overall uh, point game streak uh, streaks and his uh, obviously his home point streak. That's the one that I think people are really kind of focusing in on now. He's got 35 out of 41 games barreling down on Gretzky. I mean, the next two games are home. This next game is against the New York Rangers. And then the uh, when, when's the next one? Saturday? Saturday. Saturday. That's against uh, Nashville. So two big games just in general. Just you know, forget about the, the streaks right now. Just you're going up against the Rangers. That is going to be billed as a potential Stanley Cup final matchup. You get a rematch from, from the one that was in New York that you lost in overtime. Um, and then, you know, a couple of days later, you're going up against a red hot Predators team. So two two games that, hey, like could, could either of these stri- – well, they, they would be both if, if, you know, because the next two games are home. If he doesn't get a point, both those streaks come to a, a screeching halt. What do we think? I mean, you're going up against two good teams, two good goalies. Do they continue? Oh, and see, the next two games are scary. The Rangers game, much like that last Montreal game. It was a played good, walked away with not a great result. The Rangers mm-hmm. are scary right now. They f- they're they figuring things out. They're a really good team. The only team to clinch the playoffs as of time of recording. 
Mm-hmm. Like this is the Rangers are good. And if you continue that point streaks plural through that Ranger mm-hmm. game, the Nashville Predators roll into Ball Arena, who are sitting four points behind the Winnipeg Jets. Crazy. Four points Crazy. behind the Jets. And they are seven points behind the Avalanche, but they're knocking on the door and they are not checking up and they are only getting hotter. Like you saw that overtime win the other night. Nashville is a good team with another good goalie. Both stables of goalies for the Rangers, both are over 900 in their save yeah. percentages. That's Jonathan Quick. Nine, over 900 with a save percentage in 2024? Say it ain't so. But it, mm-hmm. like this is two opportunities for the Avalanche to not only get good wins, but to keep the streaks going. That's a lot of plates to spin. But the Avalanche could do it. Oh, sure. Absolutely. They, they, they can do it. I mean, it's, you know, you're on home ice, so that's, you play your best in front of that, that crowd. So yeah, definitely. Um, it, it's, it's a test for sure, but I think it comes at a good time. You've had a pretty, not so, I mean, yeah, you've played good teams. Don't get me wrong. Like you, but you've played some not so good teams recently too. You're taking care of it. You're taking care of business and those, those, those good teams, you have beaten them as well. So Here's two more teams on your plate. This time they're at home. Um, and I, I do. I, I I still I feel confident that Nathan McKinnon can do this. From from his from just focusing on him for a second, I think he wants this. Yeah. I think he wants to do this. Uh, you know, obviously the, the 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 fan base wants him to do it. It's exciting. You don't get this all the time. You don't like you know, the, the gone are the days when I was growing up um it, for baseball because baseball season's here hey why not let's let's talk about that for a second you always went into a season with like hey tony gwen could hit 400 this year uh before you know the home runs were flying out of the, the stadium yeah. at, at cra- crazy rates like you always thought like that could be challenged that home run record could be challenged that stuff doesn't happen in baseball there's nobody's gonna hit 400 anymore yeah nobody so records like this, where a guy can can score in every single home game, one more than Gretzky did, that's a big deal. So I think, you know, and I know there's people out there like, oh, he just cares about championships. Duh. Of course he does. Yeah. It doesn't mean he doesn't care about championships because he wants to go after this too or want an MVP. He wants that stuff. He's not going to say it out loud right now. But when the season's over or when his career is over, he's going to look back and say, like, yeah, I wanted that because it fills out my resume. And and yeah. he uh, he wants it. Trust me, he wants it. And everybody else wants him to get it, too. It's not just for him. It's for for the, the franchise. It's for his teammates. They all want him to get it, too. So and, I think he's going after this pretty hard. And Nathan McKinnon's only ruined it for himself for, like, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for a current player to be chasing a Gretzky record in this capacity to have the opportunity to beat him where he can never catch up and it's going to be almost impossible. Everybody else will be tying Nathan McKinnon from now on. Right. And Nathan McKinnon is that kind of competitor that does not want to go in the history books for the rest of time in second place. That's what makes it like you get a guy like Nathan McKinnon, the, the McKinnons, the Matthews, McDavid's like, they want to be the best. Yep. You're right. They don't want second place. This is a Ricky Bobby, if you ain't first, you're last type of mentality that they have. And to be the best, you need MVPs. You need Stanley Cups. You need all-star. Like, you need all of that. And that's what they want. So he doesn't have it yet. And you can't tell me he's not sitting and saying, like, I don't have that one thing, the MVP. I want it. Nobody else in the history of the game has it, you know has scored 40 in, in all 41 home games. Don't tell me he doesn't want that. To be the only guy on record to, to have that, that is a feather in the cap that nobody else has ever. He wants it. He wants it. And I, and, and I think and, – and Jared Bednar has said he wants to see him get it. Yeah. You know uh, what was the game where he got the the assist on the empty netter to uh, to Lekkinen? Uh Was it is it Dallas? It could be. I don't know if it was. I could be wrong on the game. But after the game, Jared Benner was like, "I was happy to see that he got an assist on that, and this thing continues." Yeah, they know what's going on, and they want it to happen. Like when the when the Denver Broncos were going for the undefeated season, and they, they ended up winning the Super Bowl that year, but they lost. I think it, it was to the to New York Giants. Giants. Yep, and it was in Week 15, I think. I think they were 14 and 0. 
and the uh, or thirteen and zero, and and they lost. They were saying, "Oh, we want it. We want to go undefeated." Of course you do, because one other team has done it. You want to match them, and then you want to best them. So um, it, it, it's there. It's for the taking. And I think he he's going to go after it. And man, if you can beat these next two goalies, I mean, you, you you've beaten good goalies if you've scored in yeah. 35 straight home games. You beat these next two, Shosturkin and Soros, uh, you're, you're you're flying high right now. So oh yeah. Um, all right, let's get our last break in here, and we come back. Yusus Anunen, obviously, he got the loss in this game, but before the game, signed a new two year contract extension. What's that mean? We'll discuss that coming up next. Let's hear from eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. It's what brings home the winning trophy. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, style, which we call the Nathan McKinnon Trilogy. That's right. eBay Motors has got you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts that you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. And eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. All right, Usus Ananen. Uh, he, he's taken the reins of the backup goalie position, and he's done quite well since he was uh, brought up. It's early, early February, I think, when he, when they yeah. called him up and kind of said, "All right, now now's your chance. We'll give you the opportunity. If it doesn't happen, we might have to address this at the trade deadline." We don't know for sure if they still were trying to address it at the trade deadline, but I don't think it was as much as a point of emphasis because of how he played leading up to it. Um, so they, I guess you could say reward him with a, a two year contract extension. Uh, I, I should have brought the up the, I know it's like what, 875,000 or something like that. Uh, yeah. I'll bring it up just to be hundred percent accurate. But, um, I, I think it is, uh, $837,500. So, um, he gets a little bit of a bump. It's like six. What is that? Not even a hundred thousand dollar bump from what he's making currently, uh, but it's a two year deal that starts next year. And Alexander Georgiev has one more year left on his current deal. Do you think that came into play here? And how they're like next year is Georgiev's last year on his contract, the first year of this Ananin deal. Do you think that was intentional to say, like, hey, next year we're gonna go back to our usual we're not going to put so much of a workload on you alexander georgiev give anonin a little bit more of a, a workload and then see what happens and does anonin the following year do they give him the keys to the car i don't know what do you see think? i think you absolutely nailed it uh, and it's kind of weird that this deal came out the same week that they're talking about Pavel Fredstow's possibly retiring because of the state of his injury. Mm -hmm. Just not, no pushing, like it's, there is no plans for his return. So there goes your backup goalie. Eustace basically right. got promoted to backup goalie. He is now your backup goalie for mm -hmm. a respectable amount of money for the Colorado Avalanche. Mm -hmm. So whatever happens this year, that's great. Next year, all the conversations that we've had, your gift, this juice, this congratulations. We get to watch it night in night out because it's going to be an evaluation period. Who wants it next year? Yeah. And the money will be there. The cap will go up by then after next year. If mm -hmm. we're not wowed by either goalie, they'll go out and find one. But next right. year is going to be a wonderful competition between the goalies where everybody gets to, whether your team Eustace or team Yorgiev, you're going to get your your sample sizes. But that's all this was, was promoting Eustace to the backup goalie position because right. Frankie's not coming back. And the, I think the difference here is, is 
Frankie was never positioned to be the the A1 goalie. I know people wanted him to be, Shaggy Von Doom included here. Uh, I, I, I think I think you you are thinking things that were never going to happen. He was never going to be the number one guy. They were more than happy with how much he, he was playing a good amount as a backup and doing very well. And he was very reliable, but he was never going to t- overtake anybody that the Avalanche had in the top spot. So we'll go ahead if you want to comment I, I th- on that. I, I think there were plans for him to be that guy. His body never allowed him to do that. I he, don't think so. He uh, would always get hot, and mm-hmm. then something would happen. He would be out for sure. the remaining part of the year. That and is I true. feel like that's where the confidence disappeared in what Frankie could bring to the team because there were times where it was Frankie Grubauer. This is Frankie's team now. And it's that you had this confidence in Frankie, but his body just kept giving up on him. That is true. That 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 you know they they, they he suffered a lot of injuries. So, uh, but I still don't feel like they ever were really going to give him that role. That's just my my opinion on that. Anunin's different. Like they yep. they have the expectation of that he can be that guy, and they want him to be that guy. So next year, I think that you're right, man. Like it is going to be. Fun to watch both of these guys. Anon is going to get more playing time next year. It's almost like how, how much Frankie got when he was was healthy um, with Grubauer and all that. Like he played a lot. He played a good amount. I think you're going to see that with Anon. Maybe even a little bit more to see what they genuinely have here. And if if they're not happy that they feel like he's not still not ready, I think they still keep him around. You got him a really cheap deal. And however Georgiev plays next year, obviously will signal if they want to sign him to a longer deal. And if they do and they feel like, hey, this is our duo, because that's what you need in, in the NHL right now. I don't think anything's wrong with that. If 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 Georgiev completely falls off a cliff um, and they don't want to bring him back, he's had a really he's had a good number right now for them. How much is he going to want? You know, all of that comes into play. But I think like if next year, if, if everything goes the way it's supposed to go, then they go forward with these two. Georgiev recently, he's been playing very well. Mm-hmm. He has been playing great. That that save percentage is creeping up little by little, which is so tough to do at this stage in the game. But he's been playing very well to end this season. So next year, I think, is big. It's big for him. It's big for Eustace. It's big for the Avalanche. Um, and and you know, you want to see both of them rise to to the to meet that challenge, we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, this this was, I think, a, a calculated two year deal. What's that? Um, so he's twenty four. So that yeah, that his birthday's in March, March eleventh. Hey, that's my anniversary. Believe it or not. <laughs> um, so he'll be twenty six at the end of that. So you know, that's that's your typical bridge deal. And yeah. then who knows what happens after that. I think it's an interesting deal, and I think, yeah, it's it's with a big eye on next year for both of them. Yep. Both of them. So we'll see how it goes. Um, all right. We will be back tomorrow after the Avs take on the Rangers. Going to be a, a good one. Should be no surprise there. So we'll see how this thing goes. Until then, uh, yeah, catch us on our social media outlets and uh, tune in tomorrow. But for today, thank you for making this your first listen of the day. That's always appreciated. He's Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. I'm Chris Maselli. This is the Lockdown Avalanche podcast. Coming to you bright and clear. Mm-hmm. See you guys tomorrow.